Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to draw iconic movie characters. Now before we start of course, if you could subscribe that would be fabulous, thank you. And also ring the little bell icon if you want to know what's coming up next. Okay, well the iconic movie character today is Braveheart. Of course William Wallace, the hero of the first Scottish War of Independence in the late 13th, early 14th century. Um, portrayed by Mel Gibson in the movie. And I want to start off with, with the uh, the big hairstyle they had, you know. Comes down and uh, almost like I would was peeking the centre, like that, and curls around the other side of his forehead, like this. And the front part over here, the front part is kind of darker. Um, there's a kind of halo of light around the back part. So you put this kind of shape, imagine the hair, springing up from the centre here, carving around his head, like that. And fairly high, the top of the head, you get these little you know, curls and sprigs of hair coming up, like that. You indicate it quite sketchily as it comes around the side of his head, like that. Okay, we'll leave that just now and come down to the forehead. Uh, a few wrinkles in the forehead here. Just indicate them like that. Down to the eyebrows, quite expressive eyebrows actually. Um, you've got a, a kind of determined but slightly sad expression. Almost as if he knew what was going to happen to him. And he was captured by the English of course and hung, drawn and quartered in London. A horrible death. Now this eyebrow goes up at the corner but this one here kind of slopes down the way, give you that slightly sad look, like that, okay? And below that we have the eyes, um, let's see, one eye coming about here, and they've got a kind of almost half closed look about them, like that, you get the people coming in here, and more of a curve at this side, as it comes up, like that, and then you get the eyelid coming in there, like that. Other one appearing about there. Again with the eyelid coming in. The pupil of the eye coming in underneath there. And sloping down slightly at that, more of a curve at that side there. And then we have deep shadow in here. So we did indicate it by the, the shape just now. And that goes up a bit further there, comes around, and the kind of deep shadow coming around this side of his eye here. And that kind of shape there. Also some shading under his eye, like that. Moving down to the side of the nose here, down to the centre part about here. And it slopes up the nostrils on the other side there, like that. Fairly small nostrils. And fairly deep shadow on the other side, like that, okay? So also a shading on the bottom of the nose there. Below that, of course, you have the indentation on the top lip coming in like that. And then the mouth. The mouth is actually quite wide. And again, like turned down, so there's a center line there, curve in the center, coming up and then sloping down on the other side quite a bit, quite sharply like that. And a grim look. And uh, the mouth at the top is quite full in the centre and coming down like that to join kind of indentations there. Bottom lip coming across almost in a straight line, a bit curving at either end like that. You get that look there. And of course a lot of uh, shadow onto the bottom lip, cutting around his chin, very strong kind of square chin. Coming in there like that, right up at a sharp angle, up to the jawline up here, and this one coming up again like that, okay. And the lines coming down from the side of the nose are again quite marked, they curve in and out, and then curve down towards the corner of the mouth there like that. This one too. And that honey has got, again, the kind of shading under the cheekbones, which I'll just shape in just now, 
small shading there and the other shading on the, the chin and shading around this muscle here and also a bit of shading under the cheekbone there but also had a couple of marks, almost like wood marks up the side of his face there, kind of blue marks. And almost like his face has been painted by the kind of being rubbed out. His ear begins in the line just above the top lip here and curves up like that. And then of course we'll go on to the hair again now. Bring this hair down on either side fairly straight and it curves out around and over his ear like that and a bit of shading around his the side of his forehead there. Same with this one here, cuts in slightly, and then the hair itself comes down, very luxuriant. And I say this dark part here, this shape comes down and it kind of curves out. You follow the, the tresses of the hair as they kind of billow out around his head. And you get one coming in here, which is a kind of plated hair, strands of hair come in there down to a kind of knot there where the V ends of the hair come out there. And the rest of his hair, again, curling out. He just put a few indications in just now. What happens is they curl out round towards his neck here, which comes down a bit here. This one, this side, curves towards this side. So his hair, his hair has been very windblown at the moment. Imagine standing on a hilltop, you know, surveying the army. Again, this dark part here curves out. You get this dark shape coming in and the lighter shape on the outside. Again, just indicate it with these curving lines coming in. We'll put a bit more detail in later. You know, imagine these wisps of hair blowing out in the wind. And these ones coming back in like that towards his neck and the tresses behind his neck coming in like that. Okay. And more over here. And the outside edge coming in about there. Okay, put more detail in uh, there later on. Um, down to his tunic, the neck appears about here. And he has a belt going across his shoulders, across his chest rather, um, and it's very wide. And there's a strap that comes out from the top of the belt there, and it comes in and then comes out again, like that, almost as if it's laced. And there's a kind of buckle shape, another bit of, of, the, of the belt coming in there, and. Very broad shoulders coming out there. And the top part of the tunic is, is um, a bit like battle armor, only it's made of leather. So there's the edge of it and his sleeve, very kind of rough material, so you can draw it in with these carving lines. Imagine it woven material coming around. I'll put more of those in later. Um, there's another part of his under tunic, if you like, this part here, the appearing in a bit there. So we'll put more detail in a second. And the actual armoured tunic, if that's what you can call it, there's a short leather shoulder coming in here, is made up of kind of strips of leather. You get to these panels almost coming across like that. Put some line in there, like there as well, another one. And these are kind of split up into these kind of panel shapes here. And there's a stud on each one. Okay, the same with these ones down here. And I'll carry on doing that uh, in a second. First of all, I just want to indicate uh, on this shoulder here, there's another panel coming down there. But also, right on the edge, we have the plaid, the tartan, draped over his shoulder, like that folded up in a knot there and coming down like that. Okay, 
So I'm going to put some more of these details in, just following as I've done so far. All of these, just putting a bit more work into that. Okay, and uh, I'll catch up with you when I've done it. Okay, as you can see, I've just put in more of these details, more of the curves in his hair. Uh, outlined the eyes and eyebrows a bit more. Put in more of these um, studs on his battle dress, like that, his tunic. Okay, so I'm going to move up now and start to put a bit of shading in. Uh, start with the, the dark part of his hair. It's dark because basically it's curving round this way and this is not getting any light, okay? The light's catching on the top of his head. So basically I would start to shade in, using a 6B pencil now, quite heavily and shade up towards these lines that you've made. Like that, these lines which delineate the dark part. So shade from the hairline up towards it like that, so your pencil line kind of blends in with the outside edge without making too much of a, a line, and gives also gives a sense of the, the hair, the way the hair is moving. So I'm going to carry on doing that, the dark shading all down here, right around here, and around this edge down to here, and some dark areas in here and around there. Okay. Okay, I've been working my way around, as you can see. And also, when I shade up the way, I've been bringing the pencil line up a bit more to accentuate these little curls and shapes of hair that appear in the lighter bits here, like that, okay? It's not all dark. Darker on the inside, but as it comes out, the dark starts to kind of blend into these single hairs that come in like that, okay? Uh, the end one end of this, uh, one edge or other, or the kind of pleated hair comes in like that, make that quite dark. And then to accentuate it, you shade in the other side so that light bit of the hair stands out, that bit of the pleat stands out, like that. And you can accentuate that hair coming in there, like that. So if you choose which areas are dark, like this bit behind his ear here, curving in there. You already made that shape, so fill it in like that, okay? And then just draw around, take the weight of a pencil and draw in some more of those curving strands of hair come in like that. Same with this side. Okay, now let's put in some mid-tones now. Um, contrast between the dark and the light here is a bit much, so what you do is bring in a kind of mid-tone Kind of take up half of that space there. And what you can also do is suggest a bit more of the hair, the curls and so on. So we can shade it, uh, you can shade in a kind of circular motion like that to get that mid-tone in. You can bring it around here so the black is not too abrupt against the light area. Like that. Okay. Now I'll come down and work on this in a second, but I want to go back up to the face now. Right, okay, let's start to put in the uh, the features. So these nice heavy eyebrows here, carving up on this side, and kind of curving down on this side. And let's see a few lines on the forehead. Coming in like that. And we'll put a bit of mid shading in here in the forehead too. Just underneath that hair there. And of course, the side of the forehead, the shape that I drew in earlier, you'd shade that in. And here too. Bit of shading coming in there. Now the Shadows under the eyes here, quite hooded eyes, quite dark shading in there, very deep in at the side of the nose here, coming up over the top of the eyelid there. Quite deep there and a bit lighter as you come around the side here. But you do get this bit of shading coming down the side of the eye there, like that. Okay, quite deep seated eyes. And 
and they should start land on the top of the eyelid here. Yeah, that almost kind of sleepier eyes half closed look. And then accentuate the top of the eye here. This curve coming up. And take out a little bit of this uh, shading there. See a little bit of the white of the eye coming in here, which I rather shaded over. And you see the pupil come in there and there. The center is very dark and middle-ish tones for the rest. The whole thing's quite dark. Okay, and then you get some shading underneath the eye here. Very world weary, careworn kind of look. Like that, okay? Then you're shading down the side of the nose. Quite dark in the center here, up to the dark nostrils. And as I said, dark around the side of the nostrils. And shading in the middle of the nose there. And quite dark in this space here, and a bit of shading, you know, kind of almost like stubble, you know, shading on his upper lip, coming down fairly light, but enough, give you the sensation of shadow there, and quite deep grooves down the side of his mouth there. And the shading of the mouth now, the line between the lips, that curve make it quite heavy, and then slopes down quickly, a slight curve, slight curve there, but sloping down. And then the top of the mouth, that curve there. So we'll shade that in, fairly dark, like that. And the bottom lip, up in the centre, as it curves across, slightly lower there, a little bit shading there. And then, of course, quite dark shading under the bottom lip as it comes down to the shape of the chin. You get this kind of curving shape of the chin. And you get quite a dark shadow under the, the bottom of the chin here, like that. And we're moving up the side. But we're shading down the side of the mouth here where it joins. And you get a kind of muscle here catching in the light. So go around that and bring your shading down the side of the chin there. And then a bit darker as you go up the side to join this bit of shading here. And of course a bit of shading on the ear. And of course you can accentuate these wood marks up the side. And also the shading under his cheekbone coming in like that. And here, no shading there, and a bit there, and some more mid-tone shading in here. Okay, so that's coming on. Move down now to the, the tunic, and the belt will be shaded along the top, and as it curves around, it catches the light, so we take the weight off your pencil and make it light, and as it curves away from you again, this bit here, by the way, around this part of the strap is dark. And as it curves up, it's dark, but it gets lighter again towards the centre, like that. Same with this bit of strap here. Darker as it goes into the slot, and lighter as it comes up. Same with that one. Okay, and there's dark shading underneath the strap there. And each of these panels, you can always do individually. I almost imagine the dark shading underneath with a bit of shadow like that. And also a dark bit of shadow under each of the studs. Okay, so continue doing that. And it's very dark down here. So I would just shade in this very sketchily again across the bottom to join the belt. It's all in shadow here. 
and as it comes up to each individual shape here, almost like scales in a fish, you know, you can put a bit of shadow in the bottom part, like that, and darker as it comes up here. Okay, I've shaded in a lot of this uh, tunic here. Uh, if I click schedule, you know, it gives a nice impression. And uh, move on to the, the, the plate now. And you get the curves of the tartan shapes coming in here. And then you get a bit of shading as the folds come down there. Some deeper shading in some of these folds here, coming up towards a knot on his shoulder, like that. And then probably this area shaded in quite dark as it comes around the edge. And then you can shade in one side of each curve as it comes down, like that. Okay, just finishing off now. Brought out the shoulder a little bit, a bit more shading in here, the folds of the cloth. And down here, a bit more sketchy, and a bit more work up here, made that a bit higher, the centre of the hair there, made a bit more subtle around the eyes, and adjusted the mouth slightly, making it slightly more turned down there. But that's it, I think that's finished, and I hope you enjoy that, and hope you can join me again for another tutorial. But in the meantime, of course, all the best, and happy drawing!